What's good, everybody? Summer's almost to an end, but if you're like me, that means the grilling don't stop. This bad boy right here has been grilling up a couple times a week for the last four years, and man, it is showing it. Namely, with the heat deflectors. They've completely rusted and fallen apart, pretty much giving me some really uneven cooking and really bad flare-ups, burning my big, thick ribeyes. I don't like that. Stick tuned, I'm gonna show you how to fix it all. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Don't forget, if you like living that best life, doing things on your own, souping up everything you got, don't forget to subscribe, hit that notification bell. That way every time we make a new video, you can find out and watch it. We got plenty of DIY, reviews, and how to's. If you like what you see in this video, don't forget to hit the like button. That way I can get hooked up with the algorithms. Today we're gonna to be doing a simple mod to this grill. We're gonna be removing the factory tent style thin metal heat deflectors that go over each of the heating elements and I'm gonna replace them with a rock grate. Some grills come with these rock grate standard. This one, however, does and This one has what they call the flavor savers. And I don't think they save the flavor because they burn the flavor up. So what I did was I purchased a rock rate for another brand grill simply just by Googling the measurements. So the first thing I did was I got a measurement width and depth of my grill case. Pretty much took it from the front to the back where the heat deflectors originally rested. And then I went left to right. So that way I made sure I could get rocks from one side of the grill all the way to the other. What I ended up coming up with was this grate right here. It's about 14 and a half inches uh, wide by 26 and a half long. My grill's 27, you know, I think a quarter inch on each side, we can swing that. I got this and I also picked up two boxes of ceramic briquettes. They pretty much look like little charcoals, except they're made out of ceramic. And the reason we wanna use this is they are gonna help radiate the heat in a more even fashion. And they're also gonna hang on to the heat. So hopefully I can get a lot better sear on my steaks and not have to use so much propane to maintain the temperature of my grill for those long cooks. Briquettes come in a little box like this. It's about 70 in this box. I wasn't quite sure how many I was gonna need. I pretty much figured they're about an inch and a half by an inch and a half. Did the math, saw so I was gonna need a little bit more than 70, so I just picked up two boxes. So if we open these things up, you can see the ones I got look pretty much just like a charcoal briquette, except only half. And these are gonna lay on that rock grate. Back in the day, I remember my dad's grill used to have uh, Lava rocks, well, I guess this is the new stuff. You're supposed to radiate heat a little bit better and maintain that heat. Kind of the theory behind these is kind of the same as using a cast iron skillet. It's gonna take a little bit longer to heat up, but it's gonna provide much more even heat and it's gonna retain that heat. So we get a real nice sear and also it's gonna prevent the drippings from hitting the element and it's gonna absorb them or steam them off, which is supposedly supposed to give the meat a little bit more flavor, but more importantly, it's not gonna hit the element and then light on fire and fry up daddy's ribeye. Well, like the big homie Snoop Dogg says, there ain't nothing to it but to do it. Let's get this thing apart and see what we're working with. Pretty much just whip out these cooking surface grates right here. We're gonna get down to our flavor savers, all right? Now these are the things that we're replacing. They're complete junk. You can see they're falling apart, ineffective even when they work. While we have all this out, I'm gonna dig out all of the little rust particles, old food particles, get those out of the way. Might as well clean it up while we're in here. And I'm also gonna inspect my heating elements, poke out any of the little holes that you see with a pin in case they're clogged. That way I got nice full BTU action going on. And if you take a look in here, you can see the igniters. And I'm just gonna hit them and make sure that they're all firing. You can hit them up with a little sandpaper, clean them off. So that way they're all sparking and your grill fires right up for you. All right, well now that we got the grill all cleaned out, I'll give you a little look at that measurement I was talking about. There's a lip back here that this tent right there rides on, and there's a lip up here that that rides on. Well, that's what the rock gate's gonna go on. So we're gonna measure that. Easy peasy, 14 and a half on ours. And then we're gonna go left to right. We're about 27 and a half 
26 and a half is what we're rolling with. Before you put everything back in there, I do recommend just checking that all your little igniters work and that you have even flame coming across them all. So let's go ahead and fire this bad boy up. Looking good. There we all have it, job done. Got the bottom of the grill cleaned out, all the little holes poked out, all my elements are burning full. Igniters are starting the grill on its own. Got the new rock grade in and put the briquettes in. It took 91 briquettes to do a 14 and a half by 26 and an inch uh, grate. So this might give you a little bit of an idea of how much you need for your project. I still have half a box and I can't wait to figure out what to do with them because you know I'm not getting rid of them. I think I got a little idea of what I'm gonna do. Might be a later video, so stay tuned for that one. Pretty much the only thing we got left to do now is to kick on that heat and grill some meat. Hopefully this thing doesn't need any more maintenance for the next four years besides the occasional reload on some dino farts. All right, so I just threw my first piece of chicken on there. I preheated the grill for about five minutes and the temperature hit 500 degrees on low, which is something that I've never ever achieved before. I started on low because I just kind of wanted to temper in the briquettes and not crack them by cranking the heat up all the way the first time. I put the chicken on the grill after I cleaned it and scrubbed it and then I oiled the cooking surface with a paper towel and some oil. I thought this might be a good Littman's test to see if this thing really does prevent flare-ups, which it does, because if I was to do this before, man, the whole grill would have been on fire. All right, so chicken's been cooking on that first side for about a minute and a half right now. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna rotate it 45 degrees. That way we can get those nice diamond chars. We're ready to flip already. This chicken's almost done. And this chicken is done. Got a really nice, really nice char on it. No flare ups, nothing burn it. Still pretty juicy. I mean, this wasn't even marinated. All I did was shake a little bit of lemon pepper on there, chuck it right on the grill. All right, well, there you have it. Super easy mod to not only extend the service life of your grill, but also make it cook a little better too. This whole project cost me about $100 worth of parts, but to put the OEM tents back in there would have been about 45 plus shipping. So about a 2X premium, but I think the quality of the grilling is gonna be so much better, it's gonna be well worth it. So if y'all like this project, don't forget to hit the likes. I got the links to the stuff in the description below that I used, if not for your own grill, because of course they're all gonna be different, it'll at least get you kind of heading in the right direction. Also, has anybody else ever had experience using these uh, ceramic briquettes? They come in all kinds of different shapes, pyramids, diamonds, rounds. What have you guys used? Let us know in the comments below. That way everybody can experiment and learn along. Thanks a lot guys and we'll see you next time.